Greetings everyone, welcome to the latest JC tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about the Danny D-139, based off of the Augusta 139. This aircraft comes in three variants. Behind me you see the executive variant. Here we have the medical and the military transport variant. We'll go into detail of each of these aircrafts and their features just a little bit. The Danny 139 weighs in at 66, 63, or 73 prims, depending on which variant you use, and either 960 or 1024 kilobytes of memory, depending on which variant you use. First, we're going to go ahead and talk about the executive variant. Executive variant is the very slim, streamlined version. It's meant for transporting people from A to B in a quick succession. But you have both the side doors that open and the two cockpit doors that open. Here, we will see our executive approaching the aircraft. And simply all they have to do is left click on any one of the seats in the back and they will sit on that seat. To get up, all they have to do is stand up and exit the aircraft. The executive version has seating for six in the back and one pilot and co-pilot up front. Now we're going to move to the Medical 139. The Medical 139 has seats for three plus one on the stretcher. This seat here is for your in-flight doctor. He will have access to the medical instruments. The owner of the aircraft will be given a transfer folder, which you can hand out the defibrillators. And then we're going to have our executive climb onto the backboard. And he will also have an oxygen mask that he can pass to patients. Now once you have somebody on your stretcher, if you came over to our medical instruments here, you can turn the on switch on, get oxygen flowing, get your heart rate monitors going. Should your patient need an electric shock, you click on the blue area of the defibrillator box and it will deliver a heart shock for them. You can continue to do this as long as the flight needs, as long as the patient requires it. And then you can simply turn off the instruments here. One of the new additions to the Medical 139, in addition to our standard rescue winch with the harness, we can now take that stretcher and use it to rescue people. We can deploy the stretcher and send it all the way down to the ground so that people can get on the stretcher and then bring it back up and into the helicopter if the stretcher goes. And finally, we have the military transport version. The special unique features of the military transport version is it carries two additional poses that the other aircraft do not. You can also see eight people in the back of this aircraft and then a pilot co-pilot up front. Also included with this one is the rescue winch for pulling people out of tight places. So now that we've covered the uniqueness of the three variants, we're going to go ahead and go through the startup shutdown process using the HUD and both mouse look. Now, the variants do not matter. The startup and shutdown process is exactly the same across all three. All the controls are exactly the same. We're just using the medical version because that's what we're going to go and take out and fly here in a little bit. So we're going to go into mouse look mode first. Down here we have our fuel. This is fuel off. This is fuel on. This is your fuel gauge here to tell you how much fuel you have left. These are your flight indications right here. You have the same ones across the bottom of your HUD. This is your brake lever, brake on, brake off, and this is your gear. So we're going to come up here and go into the starting sequence. This is your master switch on, and then your battery switch. Once your battery is on, you can see your battery level located back here. Come back up here. This is for your hover text display at the back of the aircraft. That's this here. We're going to go ahead and turn that back off because it's not needed. And this is your GPU. We don't have low enough battery yet to turn our GPU on. So now that we have our battery on, this is your engine start sequence right here. Flip those on and it'll go through the startup process.
Once you get to the point where you're hearing the propellers over the engine, you know your aircraft has started. Also, you will have a chat notice that the engine is fully started. Now that our engine's up, we can get some lights on. This is your strobe light, your nav light, beacon. This is your spotlight, your taxi light, and these are your panel lights located down here. The last two switches, this is your co-pilot switch on and off. And this is the cabin light. Or, sorry, that's the cockpit light. And this one is your cabin light. Lights up back there for them. We don't need either of those today. So we're going to go ahead and simply pick up into a hover. Real simple. Flies just nice and easy peasy. Once we're up, we're going to pull our landing gear up. See as our landing gear retracts. And then we'll put our landing gear back down. And down comes the landing gear and then we're going to go ahead and descend back into a landing. Now that we're back on the ground, we're going to go ahead and shut down. It's very simple. You can just turn your engine switches here. And the engine shutdown process will begin. And your engine is now shut down. You can go through and shut all your lights off, or you can just flip the battery and the master switch. And then everything shuts down. That's how you start and stop the aircraft in mouse look mode. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing using only the HUD. This first switch here is our ground power, and then our battery. And this switch here will start your engine. Well, first we're going to go ahead and throw on our GPU, which requires our brakes. So this is your brake, here's your GPU started, and now we're going to go ahead and start the engine. Now that our engine is running, we can go ahead and disconnect our GPU. And we will go ahead and get our lights on. Spotlight, panel, navigation light, your beacon light, and your strobe lights. We'll go ahead and jump under our construction or our settings window. Here we have several of our settings we can look at. This is for your display, the horn, this is for your shadow on the ground. This is to indicate whether you're flying or on the ground if your aircraft didn't auto detect. This is your fuel. Here you can transfer command between your co-pilot and your pilot. This is your cockpit lights. And this one over here is your cabin lights. Here we have a vertical stabilization which you need for 
the stretcher and the winches. And the R is to reset your aircraft to factory default should something happen with your scripting. So now that we've got all our lights on, we're going to go ahead and pick back up into our hover. I've got to remove our brake. Brake's off. Now we can pick up into our hover. Real simple, we're in our hover now. And we'll go ahead. This one is for your landing gear. Landing gear is up. And then landing gear is back down. While we're at the screen, we'll go ahead and touch briefly on your winch and your stretcher. So we'll climb back up a little bit. So we'll go back into our control window and we'll turn our vertical stabilization on. So here, over here on the very far side, we have our winch controls. This first slider is for the harness. You can lower your harness all the way down, bring your harness all the way back up. The second one is for the stretcher. You can deploy the stretcher. You can retract the stretcher. Now, these buttons on the top and the bottom do both. You can send the stretcher and the harness down at the same time, and you can bring the stretcher and the harness up at the same time. Now, one of the cool new features about the 139 is the automatic deploy of your floats should your aircraft come in contact with water. So we're going to go ahead and come down as if we're contacting the water for an emergency landing. And out pop our floats. Now, if you're in a res zone, the floats will fall off as you take off and fly away. If you're not, they just disappear. So, we're in a res zone, so as we take back off, the floats just simply detach from the aircraft, and you're good to fly away. Should your 139 require fuel, there are a few steps you must follow. First, on the inside, your fuel usage must be turned on. And you must not be at full fuel, as you can see here, we're less than full fuel and our fuel gauge is turned on. So we're gonna go fly right over here to the standing pump. We're gonna set down prior to the pump and then taxi up to it. You can set down right next to it or do as I'm doing here, either way works. So what we're looking for is the beep from the pump. That beep right there tells us that we are in range of the pump. So I'm going to go ahead and put my brakes on. I'm going to go ahead and shut down the main engine. Now while the engine is cooling down, we're going to come over here. And click on the power indicator. Once the power is on. Give it a second to start up. And we're gonna input the amount of fuel that we want. We want full fuel, so we're gonna go 99, and then hit send. And it'll begin pumping our fuel until the engine, until we have complete fuel in our aircraft. It's not gonna send 99 units of fuel, but it'll max out our aircraft. Once we get all of our fuel in, the pump will shut down. We can come back inside our aircraft and start the engines again. See our fuel gauge is now back to maximum fuel.